Hey there, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up an object um, that has only one map. So you've only got one texture space, one texture. So you've got one normal map, one albedo map, and one of everything that you can use for your model. But you've got different types of texture. So for example, on this model here, I've got two yellow cubes. They could be uh, they could be wood, for example. The red ones could be metal, and the green one could be cloth. But you only got one map. So what I'm going to show you now is how to use ID Mask in Substance Painter, so you can quite easily paint all this without any hassle, without any without any bleed over, and without getting all fiddly with. Um, your paint brushes in in substance painter but it's got to start in here so what we're going to do is going to create two models there's two assumptions i'm making here the first you know how to model and secondly you know how to set up materials in 3d studio max so on here currently i have got a multi uh, a multi sub object material on here with three materials you can see wood metal and cloth. So what I'm going to do now is export that as an FBX. Export as an FBX and I'm going to call it uh, long box ID. Save that and in geometry I just don't touch anything. I'll just turn on smoothing groups and turn everything else off except for preserve edge orientation. And I'll leave it at that. So I click export. Now we apply a new material to it. So this is just a single material, a standard material. And we're just going to go and it's called, I've called it long box single mat, as you can see there. So we just apply that to the, to the entire model. And we export this and we call it long box without the ID like so and we click save turn that on turn these two off and click OK there we go so we got our two FBX files one with one material and the other with um, a multi sub object material assigned to it. So now we're going to jump into Substance Painter. OK, so here we are in Substance Painter. Uh, another assumption I'm going to make is that you know how to use this package. I'm not going to sit here and show you how to use it. I'm just going to go through this one thing. Uh, hopefully you can follow follow along. So first thing to do is new project. Um, select your long box uh, without the ID and then open that bring it in uh, just leave that as it is doesn't matter at this stage click OK and hopefully you should have your your box inside substance painter your long box okay so now we're going to bake down the textures um, put anything on here you want I usually add a um, an ambient occlusion in amongst that um, just you know add what, whatever um, settings you want there and then come down here to bake textures here um, so what we're going to do now is going to use our box long box ID mesh to give us information about a map ID. So we, if you remember, we applied uh, three materials to our long box ID and we gave them all various colors. Um, and so what we're going to do now is bring it into the baking so it can use that information and bake out an ID map. So this box here and the ID box both have the same UV maps, but this one only has one map and you can see that down here on the bottom left, long 
box single mat. That's what I called it. But the other one has three. So what we're going to do is we're going to add it into our baking here. Uh, so in this box here, where it says high poly parameters, click on this little tab here and click on long box ID FBX there. And make sure it's there inside your box before you bake. Now come down to ID here, click on color source and come down to mesh ID. Now select that and make sure it says mesh ID. That's it. That's all you need to do for now. And then bake long box single mat textures. Click the button, click that button down on the right and just sit back and wait for it. Like that, so there it is. That's our box all baked up. You can see the ambient occlusion in there now as well, which is cool. Okay, so if you look at our additional maps down here, I've got an ID map. And that is taken or created from the long box ID that we created in 3D Studio. We never brought it in here. It looked, it loaded it up, looked at the, uh, UV mapping and the texture IDs and then created this ID map from that. So we're going to use that to, to separate the materials on our single material box here. So to do that, we need to just delete that layer. We don't need that for now. Uh, so the first thing we do is create three folders. Create a folder, call it metal like that. Create another folder and call that wood. Create another folder and call that, what was it, cloth. Like that. Now on each of the folders we need to create a, we need to create a black mask. So we right click on the folder, go over to here, add black mask and click. And you see it adds a black mask. With the black mask selected, go up here to add effect and come down to add color selection. Now you'll see our ID mask is already in that slot because we baked it in when we created these additional maps over here. So pick color and it should put it on top of this because it's using the same UV map. So if we pick color and there it is. So this is our metal where do we want our metal i think it was the red so let's select the red and you can see in our um, mask it's created uh, a mask for just the red parts of that model so we do the same with our wood right click on the wood add a black mask with the, with the mask selected click on add effect and add color selection. So this is wood. Where do we want our wood? On the ends, I think. So we pick color, pick the green, and you can see it's created the white areas where the green is going to be. And then same again on our cloth, add a black mask, and click add effect, add color selection. And we pick a color and we select the blue. So that's all our masks set up. So now we can assign materials to each and every one of those without affecting uh, the other one. So for example, let's, let's paint our metal. So let's add a layer into our metal. So if we add a fill layer here, pull it down, make sure it's inside our metals folder and let it go so it sits inside this group here and you can see I can minimize it let's change the color of that to something we can see and there you go it's red now if I wanted to paint on that as well I can add a black mask to that and I can just pick a brush artistic sounds good make sure it's white and I can paint as much as I like on that layer and I will not affect the cloth or the wood. Can you see? Now this is 
good for hard surface modeling. It's perfect for separating different surfaces. Um, and if you want to just keep it away, you know, if you just want to be really tight with your painting, you can do that. So let's just delete that layer, remove layer. Let's put in a material. So let's make each material that we uh, can here. So wood, let's put that inside the wood. And there it is, there's a wood. Okay, for metal, let's have a bit of titanium, pure for metal. This is our titanium. And let's have some, okay, so we've got cloth. What do we want for cloth? Um, fabric rough sounds good we'll put that in our cloth and there it is there's our three materials I can still paint on them obviously I can you know I can add another fill layer I can <clears throat> you know add a black mask and I can paint on my cloth so if I Change the color of this if I wanted it blood stained, for example, blood stained cloth. You know, I can I can still do that. You know, I, mean? I can paint on that without affecting my metal next to it, which is really really nice. And there we have our blood stained cloth without affecting our metal which is very nice if I wanted to put a bit of tarnish on our metal there I can do the same for that I can come down here I can uh, add a fill layer let's change the color to I don't know something like that maybe um, let's make it super rough so it's not shiny and let's put a black mask on that like that so our metal's still coming through nice and shiny now i can paint and uh, make it white or maybe we'll just make it subtle tarnish our metal i can do that and not affect my cloth and this now is all coming through on one map so when I squirt these out from Painter, they'll all come out in one map. So one normal map, one albedo map, one roughness map, one metal map. And all this information will be on there. And I can make it as big as I want. You know, I think we set it at, uh, what did we set it at? Twenty forty eight. we can make that 4K. So if we, you know, watch it calculate on the fly. There we go, so it's now 4K texture with all this information on it. It's perfect. Normals, you know, all the information that we want to spit out, it's all there. And that's how, and that, and that is how you set up mask IDs for one map, multiple substances. I hope you enjoyed that, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.